Tēnā koutou nau mai ki te tau tuawhao Hunting Aotearoa. Hei tēnei wiki i rungi a Hunting Aotearoa, he wallaby me te tā te whainga i roto i te waipaunamu me tō tātou kaiarahia Gary Ottman. He tangata rongunui ia mō ngā mahi whaiwhaitā. Ā, e mō hio tia whānui tia ko ia te tangata tā. Nō rera kia mau tonu mai mō ngā mahi o homauri o tēnei hōtaka o Hunting Aotearoa. Tēnei Hello, mate. Pleased to meet you, Howie. Tano, this guy is the tar man. This is your own personal collection, mate? No, no, this is a friend of mine's place, but it's uh, got some good examples of animals here. Thought we might yeah, let you have a look. Oh, OK. So what do you actually do down here? I work for the Game and Forest Foundation, and uh, what we do is we're heavily involved in managing deer and tar and chamois and wild pigs for you know, their recreational meat and trophy value. So you don't work for dog? No. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so what actually are we going to go out and shoot, mate? Well, we've got some tar here, some yep. bulls and some nannies. But what I thought we'd do first is maybe just get started on something a bit smaller, maybe a wallaby. I come all the way down here to shoot a wallaby first. Oh yeah, first is a wallaby, and then we'll go and get a tar. Wallaby first, eh? I think it's just all these heads hanging around there, mate. I just sort of got ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, mate, that's us. Okay. Go and get a wallaby first and then a tar. Let's do it. Sounds good to me, mate. I've had a fascination and uh, a strong commitment to tar since I first saw one peeping over the edge of a rock when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, you know, once you get that view of the big bull with his mane floating in the air on a big rocky outcrop in the Southern Alps, I mean, you can't help but be committed to uh, making sure that they survive in New Zealand and we continue to enjoy their presence. Well, I hear that um, Howie's a, obviously a pretty keen hunter and uh, brought up in a hunting family. Uh, I've seen some of the uh, other hunts he's been on and I'm looking forward to really taking him out. Um, he obviously enjoys the outdoors, enjoys the hunting experience and that's what we're all here for. And if we can, uh, you know, maybe steer him towards his first wallaby and his first tar and hopefully get him a feed of tar as well, then I think we will have done a pretty good job. Ka pau te tahi toru haore e haerere ana ki te taitongo o tau tahi, a kua tata mātou ki waimate ki te wahi whaiwhai wallaby. In the South Island, in the Hunter Hills, wallabies uh, were first introduced in the early 1900s and uh, they've colonised quite an extensive area uh, of the Hunter Hills and from time to time have certainly caused a lot of problems. Uh, there used to be wallaby boards that were used to keep them under control, but now some regional councils do and landowners, but also there's a lot of recreational hunters who uh, quite enjoy uh, getting out in the hills and looking for a few wallabies. Oh, aye. Even although it's the middle of the day, it's kind of the quiet period for most animals. We're just going to have a look around some of the heavier vegetation, you know, a bit of flax down there, um, a few Spaniard grasses and some of the, the greener bits where we might just see uh, an animal lying up. And then we'll go around a little bit further and uh, have a look on this cooler side on the right hand side, which has again got a bit more vegetation in it um, at this time of the day. Then maybe later on when it approaches evening, uh, animals will be a bit more active and hopefully we should uh, be a bit more apparent. Somewhere down there. It's a bloody wallaby. The best wallaby. It's a dead 
kamatirawa tumatawi e tahi kahiwi. Kahire tonu, kamatirohi wano, kahire tonu. I've had to list the old pestless mud of the old wallabies. Oh, I think they're a, they're a sort of a localised thing. You know, they're nothing compared to the old uh, ferret, stoat, and weasel, and possum, and that sort of thing. They still do a bit of damage, eh? Oh, well, they just, um, yeah, in big numbers, you know, they'll, uh, they'll get through a bit of vegetation, that's for sure. It's the same, it's the furthest I've ever walked to shoot a wallaby. <laughs> <laughs> And that was downhill, we're going to get back up that hill. Oh yeah, that's only a wheat, that's only a little hill, that one. Do they um, roam around packs to get them? No. No. I mean, you'll just sort of see them dotted, you know, you'll see a couple together or two or three or something like that. They're not, they're not like a, you know, an animal that mobs up or anything like that. Do you so, the old uh, pack stakes with? No, no. I see, as I said, I've had a friend who uh, has made Wally burgers out of them, but he was uh, Australian, so I sort of forgave him for uh, wanting to do that. But any meat's edible, just about. See down on his face here. Just between that, use that pine tree as a mark. And just look over the top of the grass in a straight line, and you'll see his head sticking out. Ah, no, wait up, I keep that healthy. Ah, oh. Hey, hey, wallaby, right, mate? Now the question is... Where are we going to get a shot from? Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what we do. Ka whakari te mahere rautaki maua, ki a riro te tahi wallaby ki a maua. Kua pahure te rua me te hawhe haore mai i tō māua timatanga Nō reira, ki a tū patu au kei o horere te o tātou hoa paku paku rā A pēnā kā hapa, kua mate au ki te rapu haere e te tahi anoa Ko ngā hoaha au ki ta mahi piki heke hiwi Tēnā, tēnā, kia ri te Ko Gary kē te tohunga e mātou ana ki āna mahi aru aru wallaby. See, just over the top of this grass here, it's like a clay patch. Okay, just, just look at the top of the grass level. And behind it on the other side of the gully, there's a patch of clay. He's standing right at the bottom of that. See him? Yeah, okay. What we want to do is we want to skinny over here. Now. I don't think you'll, I don't think you'll get to that rock because you'll be in full view. What we'll do is we'll just get down on our bumps and we'll just skinny over to you until you can get a little bit of a rest. I'll bring my day back. Over the day back, bang. Tau mai rā ki a tika i te kero kero i taku pū. He rua rau mita te tāpiti, he pūpuhi ana te hau, kā rea ue pirangi te piki hiwi anō, he ua ue te whakatūtuki i taku hia hia, kā tai a e au! Kā ki te amuri ake i ngā whakatairanga nei, hoki mai. Ke te whaiwhai wallaby māua ke te kua auaua wai mate i te wai paunamu. A, kua rua me te haurua haora māua e hikoi ana. Kua kite he wallaby e Gary, kei roto i te whawharua. A kene, ka whakaatu e au au kupu ke ngā pūpuhi roa. Ko ta tumanako, ke te tika te ke keno o te kupu.
big wallaby head. Not <laughs> bad, Emmett. Pretty good shot, eh? They're a bit small through that uh, scope, aren't they? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. <coughs> Focus it in properly. Yeah. How far is that about? Oh, 150 metres. Very good. I like this part the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait here and you get in and get it. <laughs> okay, mate. Let's get in and get it. Okay, let's go and have a look at it. Check eh? it out. Cool. <laughs> Keep that one. Bloody hard at work trying to bloody stalk a wallaby than it is a deer, mate. No. If it was meant to be easy, everybody would be doing it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger up close, huh? Come on, Pretty big, all right, mate. A bit bigger than those ones up north? Yeah. Yeah? Didn't look that big in the scope. Eh? No, that's a good size. You know, sort of pretty representative. Well, at least I can say I did my little bit for animal control, mate. Too right. Is that what you call it down here? Yep, animal control. That was a good shot. Pretty good shot. Thank you, buddy. Must have been the guide. <laughs> okay, how about we move on to something a bit bigger, more challenging? No problem. What do you reckon? Tar. Tar? That's steeper hills. Generally, yes. Okay. I'm going to head back to the track and I'll start soaking myself for that climb from the, for that tar. Yeah. Drag that one back? Yeah, might as well. Okay then, yeah, give me a rifle. I'll see you back at the track. I am more here to your far new tia and I have forgot to eat the Engari. Ma wai rā nei tēnei āhua tangi e whakatū tuki. Tēnā koutou te whānau, koe nei te kōra rāwhina o tēnei wiki. Adam, feeling a bit thirsty, man. A bit thirsty? Well, luckily in uh, New Zealand here, in Aotearoa, we aren't too far from any sort of water, but if we're in a, caught in a situation where we can't find water, um, some really, really basic methods of, of actually accumulating water over the days. Just by using a plastic bag, some string, and our native plants here. So all we've got to do is cover that branch. We tie it down to its stem. How does this thing accumulate water? Well, over the course of the day, Howie, uh, the sun shining on the plant will uh, cause a reaction. Photosynthesis. That's right. And that, that's causing condensation. Now apparently uh, over the course of a day, this should produce about a litre of water. This method here is very similar to the one where we wrap the bag around the branch. Okay, in the bag here we've got some rocks. While we put the rocks inside the bag, is to keep the, uh, the green leaves which are going to sweat. It keeps them from uh, being in the water and the water can freely collect down into the uh, corner there. What we need is to find a stick, use one. We'll put that in the middle. This will keep the bag up and allow air to circulate and we'll just put the the green leaves around here put that close that off there the rock and that'll uh, hopefully for some condensation which will collect in the bottom corner there okay this one's a little bit more elaborate uh, we've dug a hole we need to put a container in the bottom of that hole to collect our water now the heat of the earth will uh, cause condensation on our uh, polythene plastic, okay, that'll drip down underneath and uh, hopefully form some water in, it, in our container here. So we've got our container, we want to put this in the centre, we'll get the black polythene and we'll spread it over that hole there, okay, and what we do need to do is make a point where the condensation can run down and we'll seal it all off because we don't want any air to get in there, bit of earth. It doesn't matter if we put some earth on here because it's the underneath um, that's going to cause our water. Yeah, right there, I had hey. my doubts about you, mate. <laughs> oh, the sun's done its job over the day, oh, the condensation. you in the sun too Losing it, you reckon? I reckon. Oh, well, we know this one works. We're going to have a look at the others and see what uh, results they have. Yeah, mate. All right, what have we got here? 
see the condensation build up anyway. Yep. And you can see down on the uh, on the downward slope, the water's collected at the bottom. Yep. Okay. Not as much water as the uh, as the other one, but still, given time, uh, it'll probably collect. Maybe it's not in the right spot. Um, not with enough sun. Not as not as sunny as the other place was. Right. This one we have to be a little bit careful because we've got the dirt. It's trying to seal. So we take that off. A bit of condensation there, as you can see it dripping off. And in our container, we've got actually not a bad little collection of water there. Certainly a lot more with the polythene. I'll tell you what, mate. I'm impressed. Yeah. I mean, you have three different ways of getting water. You got the tremendous water. Yeah. You got water that makes you stone. <laughs> and you got the holy water. Right. Which one do you want? I'll take the stone water, mate. Another one? Yeah. What water do you have, mate? I'll have, uh, I'll have my water, mate. You're cheating bugger. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> How many up there, mate? Oh, probably ten or a dozen, I'd say. Look like a bull. There's probably uh, some young bulls there and a few nannies as well, I'd say. They were chasing each other around a little bit. What are we after? Oh, we'll get a nanny for meat, I think, Howie. Yeah. They cook up, cook up really nicely. Now the big question is, how do we get up there? Um, we walk. Is that right? Yeah. Straight up. Straight up. Well, we'll probably go actually up around the side here, because we don't want to come up directly underneath them. We probably want to come up um, either on the side or maybe slightly above if we can. But hopefully, you might be one on pretty close on the way up. Hopefully. Come we'll on. See what we can find, eh? Come on, eh? Hey, moi moi a noi hotera. Ko te mea pai ko a tai ai mau a te taraka ki te nei pito te huarai. E ki pe nei ana te korero ko te tohunga tā ka tai atu no tai ngā wā katoa. E ngari ka tai a te tohunga i te nei rā. Ko ki te muri ngā whakatai ranga. I tai atu mātou ki wai mate, a kua mau i a mātou he walabi mo te kohua, nā, i tēnei wā, he hawhe haore tō mātou tāwhiti ki te taharaki o Fairley i te wai paunamu, he whaiwhai tāna me te tohunga tā Gary Ottman. E tā! Ka tarai wā hia te taraka ki te mutanga o te huarahi, ka tahi, ka haere mā raro. Ai, ai, ka rawe ngā puke ki a haui. The Himalayan tar were introduced to New Zealand in 1904, um, especially for recreational hunting, and uh, they've certainly blossomed. They uh, now occupy something like 5,000 square kilometres of our southern Alps, from basically Haast to the Rakaia, and they're an extremely valuable animal to New Zealand, both recreationally and uh, commercially. Uh, second most popular animal people come here to hunt, and really probably the only place other than in the Himalayas that you can hunt one in a true free-range mountain environment and we consider them to be the king of the Alps. Hi, koe nei karara he pūrotu ngā kingi o ngā maunga. Te rāna te whakamauri o rātou ano i tō rātou taenga mai ki ngā tai ao o Aotearoa i te taukotahi mano e iwarau te kaumāwaru. Tukuna e ngā tā ki ngā wahi puke puke o Rotorua, engari ki hai i tūtiki te noho take take i konā Nō reira i hari a mai ki te tai hauāru o te wai paunamu, ki auraki, ki wai hau hoki. Kei e nei takiwa tonu te tā e noho pū mau ana. Ka hoki anō ki ngā mahi aru aru, nā, ko a raru maua. Ai, ko ngā hipi te pūtake o tau a raru raru. Come to a bit of a Mexican sand off here, Amit. Yep, they're not one moving and uh, we need to get past them somehow, so... We've got two ways, we either go below them and hope they go up, or we go above them and hope they go down. So, she's a 50-50 call. What do you reckon we try and sidle above them and see if we can get them to run down the gully? 
You don't mean to wait here? No, okay. we're all going to go. Come on. <laughs> okay. I te toko ngā ake o te whakaaro he tangata maro a Gary ka tīmata ngā hipi te neke. Ko te tūmanako ka neke whakararo ke ngā hipi kei o horere ngā tāi tō rātou piki ngā ake ki runga. Ah, kei te tika te haere o ngā hipi. There's two different ways of, of taking a tar if we're looking at uh, one for meat, which is what we'll be doing. Um, we'd look for probably a heart shot, which is just behind the shoulder. That way we don't ruin any of the um, front shoulders meat um, or any of the back stakes or the back legs. But when we're hunting for a big bull for a trophy, we want to make sure that he gets anchored right to the spot because if he moves at all in some of the terrain that, that he's in, um, we could lose him. So we generally take a shot through the shoulder and uh, that will immobilise him and kill him cleanly with a heart, heart lung shot and uh, make sure he stays exactly where he is and we can retrieve him. Tough going, isn't it? But I wonder too much, not too many Māoris do this. Shivers. Straight up. Wai Maria Māua te kite e tahi tākei runga akera. First tar, first tar, Fano. That was a tar, wasn't it? It was. Thank you, mate. Good one. Good shot. Very good shot. Good shot. Very good shot, yeah. How far are you reckon? Oh, 150 metres on the run. Not bad for a Murray boy. Ah, anything like that's a good shot, eh? Pretty good, mate, out of Wallaby early on. Yeah. Now a tar. Two for two. You're the man, mate. Eh? Hey, batting a thousand. You're the man. We actually spooked uh, the old buck on the way up. Yeah, the old bull on the yeah, way up. It was, yeah, bull, he was only about 10 metres away, just yeah. down there. And then he took off downhill, and then he spooked those two nannies down there, and the two juveniles, and they ran up there. And then we spotted those other ones coming up from up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lucky that one ran across there and just stopped on the edge there. Long enough for you, bang. Smart man. Perfect. I'm quite proud of myself, actually. That's a good shot. We had a good stalk, actually. So We're what's our plan from here? We're we'll going to get some meat. Yep. And then I would say it's um, all downhill from there. I like the sounds of that, mate. All downhill from there. OK. OK, I'll follow you. OK. Call that channel. That's a nice little nanny tar on that Howie. That'll be good eating. They're quite an interesting animal. We can figure out how old it is by counting the growth rings on their horns. So if we go down here we can see we're looking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about 13 and a half. So she's a well mature old girl. And uh, other interesting thing is their hooves. Now being from the Himalayas they're perfectly adapted to climbing and if you look at their hooves they've got a very hard outer ring but then when you look on the inside, it's quite soft and spongy. And that gives them, it sort of moulds around rocks and things like that and gives them grip. And that hard outer shell gives them grip on snow and, and on ice. So they're perfectly adapted. Height is, height is a tar's friend. And um, normally when you're hunting them, you know, some people say get above them, but if they know you're above them, they get real panicky. Quite often you can actually uh, be below a tar and it'll just stand there and watch you because you haven't cut off its escape route. Well, I was actually, I didn't want to go for the hero shot, mate. I just went for the pot shot. You went for the meat shot? Yep. Good. Lungs, middle of the chest. Perfect. Didn't damage the shoulders, didn't damage the hindquarters. Backstake should be okay as well. Mate, you have to be the guide of the century. My pleasure, Howie. Wallaby and Awatar. Two for two, huh? Two for two and one out of one from the old new 300 Mag Weatherby. Good rifle. Yep. Shoots well. You seem to shoot well with it. I might actually retire it now. Oh, I think it's got a bit of mileage just in it yet. You reckon? Absolutely. Choice, sure mate. There you have it, Fano. Last time I was down here, I actually thought I shot a tar, but it turned out to be a chamois, but never mind. Now I've actually shot my first tar. So on behalf of all the Fano from hunting old Tauroa, I'd like to say a big tar. What do you reckon, mate? 
Let's get it cleaned up and get out of here. Sounds good to me, buddy. A te rā wiki, tā tūtaki au ki te tahi tohunga kai pūpuhi manuku o te ao, e tohu tohu ana me pēhea te pūpuhi manu e rere ana i te rangi. He pai katoa e nei whakawaia mo te tau whakangau raki ratu. Hey, I'd like to smell on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Photosynthesizing, photosynthesis, causing a reaction. Photosynthesis. That's right. And that, that's causing condensation and water accumulated there. Him now.